In this video, I'm going to show you how match coverage works specifically when defending any kind of compression set, tight slots, tight offset, tight, any of that. We're going to talk about it in this video. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the match coverage in the 3-3 Cub defense, which is cover four quarters. The reason why is I believe it's the most versatile match coverage. If you want to learn more about match coverage, I've got an entire defensive ebook devoted to teaching everything that you can you need to know about running match coverage, whether it be cover four palms, cover three match, cover three buzz match, cover six, cover four quarters any of that stuff we teach you all the fundamentals of running that at a very high level in our patreon you can join the patreon for just ten dollars get you access to all of my man 23 offensive and defensive ebooks so what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to talk about match coverage, how it relates to tight, because tight is obviously the meta has been the metaphor pretty much all season. Um, but it's also, I think, even more so um, becoming an issue because man coverage is significantly worse than it was, you know, all throughout the season. So how do you run match? against tight because match combines the best of man and the best of zone if we're being honest so uh three three cub cover four quarters cover four show two here is the rules first and foremost if you want to run match coverage and you are on next gen consoles you have to turn this to match if you're on current gen it's going to be fine just leave it on default just make sure you don't have a zone drop set. They all have to be on default. Zone coverage set to match. Then we're going to come out in 3-3 because it's going to give us better adjustments. And we're going to audible down into cover four show two. Now, the best way to teach this in terms of what you can actually come to expect and how match coverage is going to work is you're going to get two different checks in your coverage. It's a matches a split field coverage. So oftentimes the coverage can actually quasi work differently on one side of the field than it does on the other side of the field. So in this example here, you're going to see what's known as a box check to the left side. That is the side with three receivers, the side that the running back is on. Normally match coverage numbers receivers outside to inside. So for example, Michael Thomas would be the number one receiver to the left then um, Herman Moore would be the number two receiver to the left. This vice versa, C.D. Lamb would be the number one receiver to the right. George Kittle would be the number one receiver to, or the number two receiver to the right. Now, the key player in all this actually is the running back. He's known as the number three receiver in this formation, specifically to the left side. So when you look at your zones here, you're going to notice that this guy right here says three rec hook. That stands for three receiver hook. So he's going to basically relate to the running back to the three receiver side of the field you're going to see he's going to open uh to that side now when you're getting a box check that is a four over three coverage check and essentially it's going to literally create a box this defender right here is responsible for the first deep outside corner of the box that's on the left side this defender is responsible for the bottom outside corner of the box which is to the flat this defender right here is responsible for the inside corner of the box. So if anyone comes across, that's who this defender is going to relate to. And then this guy is responsible for the top inside corner of the box. Now, the way that this practically is going to play out is if I run the quasi uh, staple of this offense, which is flood, you're going to see that the top outside corner of the box is going to be the, the corner route. The bottom of the box is going to be the flat route. And then the streak is really going to be the top inside corner of the box. So if you watch this here, I'm just going to run the play and take a sack. What you'll notice in the coverage system is that's exactly what happens. If you take a look here, what happens is because there's nobody coming over the middle field, I want you to watch a three rec. He opens here, but if you watch here, there's nobody coming back over the middle. So now he's free to look for work inside. If you come back over here, though, you're going to notice is there somebody going to the back or to the flat? Yes, there is. So he has to take him to the flat. Is there someone that's running to the outside corner? At this point, no. So these guys are kind of waiting to see how are these routes going to play out. As soon as this guy bends to the corner, now they swap off. This guy takes the top inside. This guy takes the top outside. And that is basically what the box check is. Now, uh, coming backside, these, this backside is completely different than the left side. And I'm going to prove that right here. If I run the same route combination on both sides, they're going to play it significantly differently. So if we do this right here, even though this is technically the same route combination, it's kind of not because of the running back. So we're going to do a little wrinkle. We're going to put the running back on an angle route. Okay, we're going to put the running back on an angle route. Now, again, I'm in cover four show two with match on. I want you to watch how this plays out. What you're going to notice here is the three rec is going to take 
the running back angle route. But if you look here with me closely, you're going to notice something interesting. When you run this, he opens up to take the flat, but there is no flat, right? This guy, there is no flat. So now what does he do? He's going to help over here. Now we actually got a, a weird weird uh, animation within the match coverage here. I'm not sure exactly why that happened. It probably has to do sometimes with these random bumps, like that little bump right there is probably why that happened. But if we come back over here, I want you to notice, again, last time what happened, this corner took this receiver. The safety took that receiver. Over here, if you look at this, who takes that guy, the outside guy? And then who takes the tight end, the inside guy it's almost like it's man-to-man -man. it's almost like it's man-to-man -man coverage now the quarter flat does help a little bit of this is a a little bit of it is, has to do with the fact that the tight end corner is a short corner but now i'm going to show you another concept that people like to run out of this formation and that is they basically this um and then they might angle the running back back across the middle field we saw how the three wreck handles that but anyways if we run this now you're going to see something really interesting so now I'm just going to take a sack again or throw it away, whatever. What you're going to notice now is if you look to the left side, we're going to, it's going to defend this significantly differently. Why? Because this running back is actually going to act like the tight end if you were playing this against Bunch, for example. So what you're going to see here is that quarter flat is going to jam and reroute that corner, and then he's got to get out here to the flat. Now, the problem with that is it's causing this delayed reaction, which is actually triggering kind of a screw up from the match on that side. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. Um, but what you also see here is this is this is the big piece that I want to hit on. This quarter is not responsible for the flat in a box check. That would actually be this guy's job. Um, but it's, he's actually not in a box check, as we talked about. It's almost like he's in meg or man coverage against that player. And then this guy is now responsible for the corner route. Now, in this example, it doesn't. It actually does fine. But if you actually run this against gun type offset and they run the play uh, PA seams, this this can be very problematic. Now, uh, let me show you how we can go about quasi helping the helping the zones do their job a little better. What I like to do is quite is take the guesswork out of it. So what I like to do is take both of these linebackers and I'm gonna say you're going to the flat because I'm in quarters coverage. They're responsible for the flat anyway. And I can do that by either putting them on hard flats or I can put them on curl flats. They don't have vertical responsibility unless unless they run um, like a wheel route, right? So curl flats will be fine. Then we're gonna take this guy, the slot or nickel corner and put him on a vertical hook. The reason I like that is because vertical hooks they're my opinion um they're i'm gonna kind of be the three wreck so now i'm mainly just keeping these quarter zones and what you'll notice is now this flood concept on both sides it doesn't really matter you're gonna see we're gonna be able to handle that left side flood gets handled right that right side flood gets handled okay as well now another little piece of this that i would want to i do want to recommend is if you're playing and i talked about this the other day if you are playing tight offset normally the slot corner is going to be opposite of the running back so um for example if the running back would just be on the other side so if the running back is on the right this won't be as good of an example but it's still quasi an example and they run a concept like like this right here don't worry too much about the backside. I'm just going to create a standard flood. But if you watch this, you're going to see kind of what I'm talking about, where that corner can potentially out leverage the man coverage, which was matched but became man. So how do you handle that? That's where this vertical hook becomes super, super relevant because what happens is a non-shaded, really important that I say non-shaded, a non-shaded vertical hook oftentimes will be able to handle this streak corner concept so you see here the vertical hook will match him and now you've got two people helping so at least you have two people helping on that concept another way to handle that um is is honestly to play what i call in and out coverage so what you can do is you can actually take the outside corner and man him up on the the right side guy and we're going to take the guesswork out of it a little bit and say you guys are playing man-to-man -man basketball on the right 
on the left side we're playing box check and if there's any crosser whatsoever that goes over into this area where my user is i need to be responsible to user that myself so let's say we do get flood here you see this is going to play fine but i know right there you see see how he roasted the guy up top that's my responsibility to get back and help on something like that so that is kind of a, a general guide to match coverage against tight another way you can do it a little safer way is we're going to play to the two receiver side we're going to play just standard uh cover three okay with a purple now what i've got to know defensively uh, and i think this is fine as well what i've got to know defensively is i've got to know okay they're not going to match the right side players um, i'm only getting match on any flood concept to the left side so if they run a play like this then what I need to do, I need to be in the middle of the field looking for the vertical of either the number one or number two and take that all, take all of that player. Okay. So that is how match coverage works against tight. And those are some tips that I think can help you run match better whenever you're facing any tight formation. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys want to learn more about match coverage and how to run it at a really high level, make sure that you join our Patreon. The link is down in the description below.